Hi, my name is Claire Chan. I'm a Creative Development Specialist here at the Canadian Museum of History, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to our new exhibition, Unexpected Surprising Treasures from Library and Archives Canada. And it's also a delight to introduce you to my colleague, Forrest Pass. Thank you, Claire. My name is Forrest Pass, and I'm a curator at Library and Archives Canada. And Claire and I are part of the team that developed the special exhibition. The big idea of this exhibition is to present artifacts from the collections at Library and Archives Canada that might be a bit surprising, a bit unexpected, uh, perhaps even a little bizarre or, or out of place. Uh, but if you scratch beneath the surface, you'll find that each of the artifacts in this exhibition tells a fascinating story about Canada's past. It's also an opportunity to showcase the diversity of the collections at Library and Archives Canada. You may think of archives as dusty old files or dusty old books. Uh, in fact, there's very little dust in our uh, state-of-the-art facilities. Uh, but you'll also find that our collections include works of art, paintings, engravings, postage stamps, even a musical score. And uh, all of these are presented in the, the exhibition. Uh, these cover a, a period of over 400 years of history and uh, come from all regions of Canada and from beyond. So to bring together this great variety of artifacts, we have organized the exhibition in three themes. The first, uh, we start with wonders, and then we go on to secrets, and we finish myster with mysteries. So we can start the tour. So do you think you... Yeah, we can. Yeah. That's okay. There we go. Yes, yeah. yeah. The first section of the exhibition is Wonders, and this is really a feast for the senses. It uh, presents artifacts that were intended to delight, to astonish, or to surprise at the time of their creation, and we hope that they continue to delight, astonish, and surprise today. We wanted to highlight some really wonderful prints that we have. These are views of Canada, uh, actually views of Quebec City, that were made in the 1700s by a European artist. And this artist had actually never been to Canada. So really their imaginary views that were created uh, to present Canada as an exotic and unusual place for, his, for the artist's European audiences. Something else to notice about these uh, prints is that if you look closely, the composition or the perspective is uh, a bit distorted. And also some of the writing on the prints is backwards and these are our cues or clues for us of how these prints were originally meant to be seen and if you take a look at this image you can see in it a device called a zogroscope and this was an early uh, viewing device it was kind of a novelty in the 1700s it used a mirror and a lens uh, to help create a more heightened view of three-dimensionality in the prints and what's really fun is that our uh, technical team here at the museum has recreated uh, elements of the zogroscope here for us. So we have the lens that you look through, uh, we have the mirror at the back, and then we have these reproductions of prints that you can place in the device. And you can, um, you can, if you can see for yourself this heightened sense of three-dimensionality and it just have an, an enhanced full experience of how the prints were originally meant to be seen. And uh, Forrest can demonstrate for us how to, uh, how to look at the prints and how to use the zogroscope. So we'll continue the tour in the next uh, part of the exhibition. In this theme, uh, we talk about secrets. We've brought together a whole variety of artifacts. Um, some of them are secret documents that were classified and now have been declassified. There's other objects that create, uh, contain secrets. And the way we brought all of these together is that these are all items that through research, through time, um, through their context in the national collection, we can better understand the stories behind them and the secrets that they contain. And Forrest is going to talk about a uh, special one of those. Yes, my favorite uh, artifact in the whole exhibition is in the secret zone. And this is a Masonic tracing board. Uh, it's an oil on canvas painting 
produced for a Masonic Lodge in rural Upper Canada, present-day Ontario, during the, the early 1800s, the beginning of the 19th century. Now, a tracing board is a memory tool, but it is also a teaching tool, and it was used to instruct new initiates into a Masonic Lodge uh, in the secrets and lessons of the order. So, the new initiate, uh, as he was going through his initiation ritual, uh, he would walk, metaphorically speaking, through the floors of, uh, of this temple, a representation of the Temple of Solomon. And uh, on each of the floors, he would encounter objects that recalled particular lessons uh, of, the, of the order. So in the, on the bottom, we see some of the working tools, a, a plumb bob, a square, and a, and a level. Uh, as we move upwards, candles, uh, again, some more of the working tools in the second level, until we get to the third level, where there's a coffin with a, a skull and crossbones on it, a sprig of acacia, and uh, Noah's Ark, an hourglass, uh, some, other, uh, some other features, all of which are highly significant to, to members of the Masonic Order and all uh, speak back to the secrets of the Order. Now, Freemasonry may strike us as, as something uh, very perplexing, uh, very, very difficult to understand, difficult to penetrate, but in fact, it is hugely significant in the early colonial history of Canada in that uh, the Masonic Lodges provided social benefits to men in, uh, in settler communities uh, that uh, wouldn't have had access to these benefits otherwise. And secrets were a means of tying together the men of the Lodge, uh, strengthening those bonds of fraternity, those bonds of community. We, we also wanted to highlight the overall design of the exhibition, which was created by our teams here at the museum. Um, what we wanted to do was create a kind of imaginary vault or uh, a collections area that would have, and um, kind of imagine that it's maybe a, a private or exclusive or almost secret space where all of these items have been brought together. And what we wanted to do was be able to invite visitors to feel like they had maybe a kind of exclusive or privileged access to the space and so that they could uh, come in and feel invited to linger and to spend more time with the objects and the stories that they tell. So we'll continue the tour with the last theme in the exhibition. Here with Mysteries, we've brought together a number of items that continue to be curiosities and a bit unexplained. So these are items that the secrets haven't been revealed. We don't know the full context behind them. We don't know all the stories that they can tell, but hopefully with their presentation here, um, with their larger context of in these national collections, with time and research, perhaps um, we'll be able to understand more about them. The case in point is the final artifact in Mysteries and indeed the concluding artifact for the entire exhibition. Uh, this is perhaps the most mysterious map in the history of cartography. In the center of this print, we see a map of the world as it was known to Europeans around 1580, which uh, allows us to, or allows historians to, to date the print to some time towards the end of the 16th century. Uh, however, the map is framed by the the cap and cowl and regalia of a court jester. And uh, around the, on the, the necklace here and also on the top of the cap, we see various mottos, Latin mottos and, and epithets uh, that speak to foolishness or silliness. So someone is being mocked by this engraving, but we don't know who. And uh, scholars have puzzled over this map and what exactly it means, what exactly this, uh, this print or satire means for decades or even centuries. Now, it is entirely possible that a, an eager, intrepid, exhibition-going would-be detective will, uh, will look at this map over the course of the next year and find some clue that has uh, evaded scholars for, uh, for such a long time and finally crack the code of the mysterious fool's cap map. So we hope that we have succeeded in piquing your curiosity, and really that's what this exhibition is about. It's about encouraging visitors to come and see some of the more intriguing artifacts from the collections at Library and Archives Canada, along with some complimentary items from the collections of the Canadian Museum of History, and to look at them closely and consider the stories that they can tell about our shared past. So we look forward to welcoming you to the exhibition. Thank you very much. Thank you.